Eugene, founded in 1848 by Eugene Skinner on Kalapuya land, is a town that over 160,000 people call home. Eugene is known for its beautiful wildlife, friendly people, and is famous for the University of Oregon. The city's official slogan is, a great city for the arts and outdoors. But what is Eugene's full story? In 2005, American historian, sociologist, and author James W. Lowen published a book titled Sundown Towns, A Hidden Dimension of American Racism. Now you might be asking, what is a sundown town? According to Lowen, a sundown town is any city in the United States with a history of excluding black Americans or sometimes Chinese Americans and Jewish Americans from their city limits. Sundown towns are so named because many had signs outside city limits saying, don't let the sun go down on you in this town. Often, when we think of racist exclusion policies, we think of the American South. And when Lowen began his research on sundown towns, he expected to find about 10 sundown towns in his home state of Illinois, and maybe 50 throughout the country. Instead, he found 507 sundown towns in Illinois alone, and thousands throughout the United States. Lowen shows that sundown towns can exist anywhere, north to south, from Maine to California, any time from 1890 all the way to 1968. Location doesn't matter. Sundown towns can be anywhere. Oregon alone has 24, including Eugene. The land we now refer to as Eugene is the traditional indigenous homeland of the Kalapuya people. Following treaties between 1851 and 1855, the Kalapuya people were dispossessed of their indigenous homeland and forcibly removed. As white Americans settled in Kalapuya Ilihi, this legacy of racism and exclusion expanded as white supremacist organizations attempted to create an all-white paradise in Oregon. In 1923, the weekly magazine Oregon Voter declared that Eugene now appears to be one of the thoroughly kluxed cities of Oregon. The white supremacist organization, the Ku Klux Klan, had a strong presence in Oregon since the 1920s. Eugene had one of the strongest groups in the state. According to the Register Guard, by December 1923, there were 65 KKK claverns, or chapters, in Oregon, with a peak membership of 35,000, according to the UO hired historians. On view until May of 2019, the U of O Museum of Natural and Cultural History displays this very history in their exhibit, Racing to Change, Oregon Civil Rights Years, The Eugene Story. On display at the museum are photographs, interviews, and historical archives of Black Eugene residents, documenting the discrimination they faced as residents of Eugene and UO students. In the 1920s and 1930s, many model Eugene citizens were openly affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan, including Frederick Dunn, a UO classics professor who held a leading role in the KKK, and UO founder Matthew Deedy. Matthew Deedy was born in 1824 and moved to Oregon from Maryland during his time in the army in 1849. It wasn't long before he would become involved in local politics, and he would soon run a position as president of the Constitutional Convention in Oregon as a pro-slavery candidate. Later, he would become the president of the Board of Regents at the University of Oregon. Deedy Hall was built and named in his honor in 1876 and continues to stand today. In 2019, faced with a controversy over how to address the University of Oregon's racist history, UO President Michael Schill agreed to change the name of Hamilton Dorm Dunn Hall. Today, the hall is known as Unthink Hall, after De Norval Unthink, UO's first black architecture graduate. However, despite demands from the 2015 Black Student Task Force to change the name of Dee Hall, Schill instead opted to keep it, stating that the Dee situation was not clear-cut and whether or not he was worse than people of his generation is, I think, open to debate. Schill recommended not to rename Dee Dee because leaving the name would invite the Eugene community to learn from past mistakes. But does this decision adequately address and work towards improving the material realities for Eugene's black residents? Not to mention that despite his promise, as of 2019, Schill has yet to complete the planned installation that would educate visitors of the building's history. The exhibit tells the stories of Dee Dee and Dunn, but also documents the lived realities of UO's black student body. Black students attending the University of Oregon have had to fight for the right to attend the institution. The first black student at the U of O, Mabel Bird, 
was denied campus housing and finished her degree at the University of Washington. She went on to become an influential civil rights activist. But 10 years later, Maxine Maxwell faced the same issue and later withdrew from the university after being forced to live 10 blocks away from campus instead of in student housing. Housing in Eugene was far from just a university problem. As said by Willie C. Mims, there was not a bank in this whole city that would lend a black man money for a business. I decided I was not going to allow this city to run me out of town. I was going to stick and I was going to make a living some way or another. Today, we see the legacies of Eugene's exclusion of black residents and how the U of O treats and values its black students. Oregon's predominantly white population is not a mistake. It is a result of decades of racism that has driven out black residents while socially and economically excluding any who stayed behind. That is Eugene's legacy. Eugene and thousands of other sundown towns just like it.